In the Weddell Sea as a whole, there have been quite a number of expeditions on the east coast, but there actually haven't been that many to the west coast. So in the late 1970s, people used um, hot drills to drill through hundreds of metres of ice and put a camera down and see what was there. And they found that there were some scavenging um, mini predators, little amphipods, which are related to the crustacean, they're related to shrimp and crabs. And some filter feeders, there were some sponges down there, and some hydroids, but not an enormous diversity of life. But that could be just because they were looking at a very small area. Since then, there have been a few more hot holes drilled through the ice, and um, the, the, it seems to be slightly more diverse. So there are um, sea cucumbers have been seen, and um, other, uh, other scavenging animals, some suspension feeders that are feeding from any flocculent material in the water column. But again, not a high diversity, so it might be indicative of quite a poor nutrient um, ecosystem. The expedition that we're going to be going on, we hope to, for the first time, instead of looking at one very small area in one location, looking at a range of areas using some mobile um, pieces of kit that can actually move around rather than there being one hole in one place where you can look at what's down there. So we intend to use remote operated vehicles, which are robots that are attached to the ship. And as far under the ice as we can go, we're gonna travel and pick up animals and, and see what's there. And those will be the first time that we've managed to actually get animals back on the ship, because we've only looked at them in pictures before. So that is very exciting to see what lives under the ice and to actually get those animals back in our hands and see if they are new species would be exciting. We're going to use automated underwater vehicles as well and these are not attached to the ship at all and they can go under the ice for potentially long distances so we program them we give them a plan and they go off and they do this plan over about a day so we release them and then we go and do other stuff and after a day we'll pick them up and we'll get a lot of downward facing pictures of the seafloor so we'll be able to see what's underneath the, the areas that we can't even sample and more excitingly still, um, we have um, some modifications to these automated underwater vehicles that means we can actually look up as well. So we intend to not just look at what's on the sea floor, but a few hundred metres up to what's underneath the sea ice. And that is called sympagic fauna. That's the animals that live underneath the sea ice. And we know that krill lives there, um, but we don't really know if any other animals do. So covering a large area using an automated underwater vehicle will be um, very exciting to see that fauna.